thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. If you've been listening since the very beginning, you have heard our episode with our guest today. She is just on a roll, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. Bringing back um, from our very first episode, this is Taylor Austin. Die, what's up, girl? Glad to be back. Thank you for having me again. That was such a fun time. First interview. It down was in such, Georgia. Yes, it was so well, and it was my first um like live interview. So I was a little nervous. And it was just kind of crazy that you were just on a roll then and you're on a roll now. So when we first talked, um, that was back like right after you dropped the teaser for Rest in Peace. And then yes. obviously that song blew up and then <laughs> Yeah, all these other things that happened for you, um, like dropping the album back in 2023 for Out of These Hills and yeah, great success with Bible Belt. I mean, you've you've just been on a roll. Like, oh my gosh. It's been fun. Yeah, we've been rocking and rolling. It's it's really just, I mean, I've had the best time of my life. I'm going to go ahead and just start like from the next couple things that you have going on because you have so many things happening um this week so the week that this is recorded you perform for the first time making your debut at the grand all opry how excited are you oh my gosh like i still it still doesn't even feel real and i don't even know if it's going to hit me until after i'm done because it's just something i've wanted to do for my whole life really and you know, just getting that invitation, especially from Jamie Johnson was, you know, I just so shocked, so surprised. I had no idea. Everyone kept it from me for like a week and a half. Oh, <laughs> my manager, all my team knew, like obviously. And then my husband knew, my mom knew, and they all kept a big secret for, like I said, almost two weeks. So I was absolutely shocked especially that my husband kept it from me because he is a loud mouth <laughs> i know i was about to say i'm surprised ben to just run off at the mouth oh, you know ben, you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny so okay jamie johnson how's you how do you know him before he invited you like how tell me about that relationship um well i mean him and my manager were are really close friends so when he called that day on facetime you know, I always say hi to him and stuff when him and Lex are chatting, but he asked to speak directly to me and I didn't really think it was that weird at first. And, and I didn't really put two and two together until he said Opry. And then I just, i if you see the video, like I lost it. I'm just, I'm not a crier at all. And I just, <laughs> I was so emotional for me. I don't know. Like I still can't really talk about it. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Though. No, I remember seeing the video. I was like, this is it. Like, this is one of those moments where it's like a pinch me moment. Cause I feel like you've just been grinding forever and ever and, and being a fan for as long as I have, like seeing all of these amazing things happen for you. And now like, here's the Opry, right? The, this is like one of those pinnacle things that like all country artists want to get to. And here you are like, <sighs> hooray. <laughs> and I, yeah. It's just, it's really, honestly, it's surreal still at this point. I know I'm just a couple days out now. I've been, I've got so many interviews today, tomorrow, went and got my nails done, a little surprise. Oh, well, you're going to know what color I'm wearing. Um, oh, I'm wearing cute. A, I'm wearing a red hat, so it's going to match the nails. But yeah, Perfect. I've just been really putting the hammer down, getting everything ready, and um, been doing Sober October. We're almost at day 30, so very oh, excited. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to be in good shape, physically, mentally, and everything for this, because it's so important to me, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's coming up. It's really That's soon. That's awesome. Okay. Well, let me ask you this too. With the Opry and the debut, I want to say there's like specific rules. So this is maybe you acoustic, right? Or do you do like a full band set for the, for the debut? So, um, when you have your debut debut, you're allowed to bring two band members with you. Cool. So of course I'm bringing Ben to play the drums. Yeah. And, um, my best friend, Jason, he's been my guitar player. We've been playing music together since I was five years old. Yeah. And so he's always been around and in my life and we've always been really close. So it's, it's honestly really special to me to get to have those two, two of my favorite people on stage with me. Um, and then the rest will be the Opry band. So it will be full band and we'll oh, uh, do the rehearsal with the Opry band beforehand. And I get two songs. Um, I'm singing Almost Oklahoma and Yay. Rest in Peace. Yay. So, uh, really excited. Yeah. Yeah, two great ones. Um, so 
Okay, uh, that's funny that you mentioned Jason too because I, I've seen you play with him like forever now, and I didn't realize that y'all had such a great friendship. Like for I don't know, whenever you move to Nashville and you find players to play with, like for some reason it didn't like hit me that maybe y'all knew each other ahead of time. But how cool that yeah, you like I have mean, these great connections. He's actually he's he's older than me, so when I was like in sixth grade, he was graduating high school mm-hmm. and he taught me a lot. Obviously I credit a lot to my music, to our music teacher, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Wilson. Um, but he, he taught, Jason taught me a lot. We spent a lot of nights up, you know, playing music until three or four o'clock in the morning. My mom and dad are like, please go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we've been, we've been close. He's been pretty much in every band that I've ever had. And, um, I'm just thankful to have him on the Opry stage with me because uh, getting to share that's it's pretty special. Yay! Well, I can't wait to see all the stuff that you post about it. I hope you do like a get ready with me that day too, because like I obviously love to see those videos. Um, so I'm yeah, my own makeup, so I probably will. Yay! Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I, I really do like. <laughs> I hate to admit this, but I feel like I steal a lot of your uh, makeup routine when I do my makeup. We were just talking about how I don't do much of it anymore, but when I need it, when I need the glam, I'm like, "What's Taylor wearing?" Like, let me go <laughs> steal some that's of her products. Cool. I mean, that's all my TikTok is. Honestly, it's pimple popping and makeup. To be completely <laughs> honest. <laughs> That's perfect. No, uh, I get yeah, it. I really open my TikTok in public because it's this giant zit just being in <laughs> I feel like if someone's looking over my shoulder, they're like, what is this girl doing? <laughs> but yeah, I think that's what TikTok's for, man. Just getting those recommendations. And like, I love, so like, good. I have a lot of friends that I support on there and makeup artists, musicians alike. So mm-hmm. I think it's a great tool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, okay. So you talked about Almost Oklahoma, Rest in Peace as being the two songs that you're going to play. And Almost Oklahoma is a single that you released, but it's also included in your new album that's coming out on November 15th. That's called Sick of Me. Um, We'll go through some of the tracks on that because I really am excited to hear all about how the writing process went for a bunch of these songs that I haven't heard before. and since we're talking a little bit about what you're playing at the opera, go ahead and let's talk about Almost Oklahoma because it's it's one of those more like vulnerable songs, a little, little softer, a little, a little sad, a little sweet. I'd love to hear what the inspiration was for that song. Um, I was doing a writing camp with my buddy, J.B. Patterson. Um, he was formerly in J.B. and the Moonshine Band. And he just came with this idea, Almost Oklahoma. But his idea was that it was about this girl that he had met and a long time ago and in Oklahoma and all these other girls, like they were never as fun as Oklahoma, the girl he Mm -hmm. met in Oklahoma, Mm or he never had as good of time as he did when he was with this girl in Oklahoma. So that was kind of his idea that no girl is ever Oklahoma because they're not the partier or like the, as much fun. So um, we started writing it and I was like, you know, this could be, if we'd spun it in a different way, this could be really interesting about like comparing yourself to another girl. And originally that was the idea that it was just this ex-girlfriend that you were constantly comparing yourself to. Mm-hmm. But then we get to the bridge and I'm like, wait, what if she's dead? <laughs> I <laughs> she know. Like, oh my God, you're sick. And I was like, hear me out, hear me out. And I just spit the bridge out and like, <clears throat> two minutes and he was like will you write that down <laughs> and so uh, we started tweaking stuff from there and and, and the, the song ends up being about this guy who's who's with his current girlfriend but she feels like she can never live up to his ex which has passed away yeah. and I just think it's a really neat spin and I've not really heard a lot of songs like that so I'm, I always like to to do the different things, you know, um, like Bible Belt, for example, you know, okay. you don't really hear a lot of songs about hookers coming from women, especially. So, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I kind of love twisting those tales in a different way that you wouldn't expect, and mm-hmm. I really like that song for that reason. Yeah, and the the visual that you have for the, the music video for that is really so, so bittersweet in the way that, like, you know, you get the you get the full gist of the song when you see the music video, and it's like, I don't know. I see I, now that you say that, like, it wasn't originally planned to to have that twist in it. Like, I, man, that hits home a lot harder now. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. 
the, yeah. yeah, the video. Um, in the beginning, you think this guy's just like an asshole because he's like, oh, no, not those flowers, not those flowers. And then you kind of start to see that he's actually a pretty sad guy. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. But, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like I said, one of the more, like, vulnerable tracks. Um, and so it's really cool to see that side from you balanced out with you know this like sick of me and this um like poison in the well side of you too I think that's really it's awesome that you're able to share so many awesome versatile sides to yourself so whew, can't wait to hear yeah, more. that was really important for this album I, I you know I obviously have that sound that I love but I, I did want to kind of get vulnerable there are a couple acoustic tracks on the album as well and those are a little bit uh especially the last song is a little bit more vulnerable vulnerable um as well but I kind of like that mixture of up and down um, for an album. Yeah. Obviously, I love my party songs and those rocking ones when we play live. But I think that listening down the album, the experience is um, kind of like this. And I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how you're able to make folks feel something. Not just like, you know, oh, that sounds nice. It's like an actual they just take it all in. You know what I mean? I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, it invokes... It, I try to definitely invoke something, you know. Every time I send one to my mom and she starts crying, I'm like, yep, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we love your mama. Oh, my gosh, she's no, amazing. I do too. She's so excited <laughs> for this weekend, too. She's coming to every show on the tour, so... Oh, amazing. She's been our personal chef. She's brought sweet treats um, oh. every show, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's love perfect. You, yeah, love you, girl. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the title track because I know you've teased it a little bit here and there, um, but you're saving it for the album instead of dropping it as a release. Um, tell me what, how that writing process went and tell me, you know, what really kicked off that song and why you decided to make that the title track. Um, well, I think it kind of sets the tone for the album because – a lot of the songs on the album are this kind of like, it's almost like a dark Appalachia theme where, mm -hmm. you know, you kick off and it's like, I'm sick of myself. Like I'm so tired of being messed up and like messing up just over and over again. And I think a lot of people relate to that, but you know, once again, I feel like you don't really hear a lot of songs about that from women in, in this industry. Like, you know, really just coming forward and be like, Hey, I'm a, screw up. I was trying to think of a I'm better I'm a mess. Word than... Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but that was really important to me to write something like that, to just like give people something to, to latch onto and then kind of set the tone for the album. And I wrote it with Natalia Lipsitz and Jamie Colazzo. And we got in the room and I was like, I want it to be heavy, but I also want it to be rocking. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> I tell Jamie, I'm like, I want a big nickelback bridge. Yeah. So really long, um, when it gets there, it just it's a whole key change and everything. And it just it's really fun to play live, which is also big for me. Yeah. Um, but I think the reason I named the album that is because I feel like it just sets the tone for the whole thing. And if you listen down, it does kind of tell a little bit of a story um, as you go through. For sure. Well, okay, so and, and sick of me. You know, we talked a little bit about how you've done some teasers for it here and there. Um, and then also, we can we can announce it now, um, that you have a music video dropping for the for this single um, on November 19th after the album comes out. What was it like recording the video for this? Okay, this, I say this every time, but this is honestly my favorite video. Um, the idea is that I'm being taken in to like a hospital, a, a mental hospital, a psych ward, whatever. I'm in this big gown, the hospital gown, and I'm just fighting the doctors like, and they can't figure out what's wrong with me. And I just keep saying, I'm sick of me. I'm sick of me. I'm sick of me. Please help me. And then um, the whole video is me escaping from this hospital and still in this car. And then <laughs> ultimately in the end, I get caught, but it's really cool. Really fun. We rented out this whole big hospital scene and, Honestly, just if you're watching this, go watch it. It's my favorite. I can definitely say that 100%. Yeah. But really fun to storyboard that one out. The team knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I, so how much influence do you have on, like, the storyboard aspect of it? Because, like, that whole picture in my head, like, that is so wild. I love it. I love it. Love it. Oh, all of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I found the spots. Like, 
Uh, me and my manager obviously ba bounce back and forth uh, ideas all the time, every day, 24 hours a day. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm completely 100% involved in all the process and that. Yeah, for sure. Um, not to give away too many secrets on your album, um, just because I know we've talked about a couple of the tracks there. And there are other singles that you've released like ahead of time. Um, let's talk a little bit about Poison in the Well, because I know that that song's been out for a good bit. Um, and I've heard you sing it live now. Um, I think this was back like, oh gosh, CMA week um, at the BMI party oh, yeah. thing yeah yeah um because okay. it's like do you still use it as like your show opener is poison in the well like your opener so we're actually opening this run with little misfortune Ooh, okay. and it's very fun um okay i won't get into that but poison <laughs> in the well is also super fun um uh, it's about my hometown mm -hmm. i write a lot about my home i write what i know yeah, as but you should. It's yeah. about this diner at, at the house, and it's called the Bus Stop Diner, and it's right in Town Square. And when I say Town Square, we have a courthouse in the middle, and then that's pretty much it. If you blink, you're going to miss it. <laughs> so everyone goes there in the morning uh, to get their coffee and breakfast, but the real reason they go is to just get all the gossip. So. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the inspiration behind this song, because I've heard so many rumors about me that I'm like, wait, what did I do? Tell me more. <laughs> and uh, I think everybody experiences that. You know, it's just that, that same old small town drama. And it's just a fun way to spin that kind of negative thing into a funny positive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then um, with Fake Ring, you say on social media and all that kind of stuff, that this is like a true story. Like this actually happened to you with, oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Am I still here? Sorry, I just got a notification about a uh, like unstable internet, so I want to make sure I don't I don't lose you. Um, I got you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, with fake ring, you you talk about how this is based on a true story, and like give me the deets because I want to know exactly how this happened. And I think you you kind of go through it on social media a well, little bit. Everyone but. thinks it's about my darling Ben, but it's not. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I've been married before, um, really young, and that, I mean, the song is basically every word the truth. I mean, took it to the pawn shop, and he said, oh, girl, this is not a diamond, and I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, um, it's a CZ. I can give you, like, a hundred bucks, and I was like, no, thanks. I'll keep it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's still somewhere. I, I I think it's back at my mom's house, maybe. But. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! That's like I said. All right, what I know, I know it's very unfortunate and it doesn't seem real. But you'll be surprised at the amount of girls that have come forward after hearing that song and said, "Oh my God, this same thing happened to me." So <gasps> what? Oh my gosh! Oh, hundreds of comments. I couldn't believe it. I thought, yeah, I thought for sure no one else had went through that, but. <laughs> You write well, what you know. Same life, I guess. Yeah. Write what I know. <laughs> and it's so crazy, though, like how often you'll have people reach out to you, I'm sure, and just be like, yeah, this did happen to me. Like you were just explaining with, with Fake Ring. I'm sure that there's other stuff out there. Maybe, oh, I hate to say like almost Oklahoma where that same situation is, you know, going on in someone's life. But I had a man come up to me this past weekend in Ohio and he just broke down and started crying and said his wife just passed away. And, you know, it was just really sad. Um, but then I get a lot of people that heavily relate to pharmacy, you know, that have had mm -hmm. struggles with pills and prescription pills. pills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm from Eastern Kentucky. So I have dealt with that very much firsthand yeah. all my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's always something that's real important to me is just writing, obviously what I know, but also writing the things that are a little bit touchy and nobody really wants to talk about because yeah. there are people out there living it that need to relate to that too. Yeah. And what a great way that you have to explain all this stuff as eloquently, ooh, eloquently, as you do. I feel ooh. like, because it's hard to describe those kind of situations without being like kind of brash about it. Um, and I feel like and you handle that so brash well. About it because yeah. there are people that are truly living that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's not coming from a place of judgment. It's just basically I brought from a place of awareness. Like, hey, yeah. I know that this is happening. I see you. I feel you. And that's what I always strive for in my songwriting. Well, ugh, 
<laughs> I just love you for that. Okay, so tell me, uh, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here. Uh, you've recently signed with Warner Chapel, Nashville. Tell me a little bit about how that came to be, how that differs from, you know, putting out the album back in 2013 and putting out that album now. I don't, I feel like I'm a little oblivious when it comes to stuff like that, as far as like being signed and, and how that oh. Well, guys, I'm, you still know. Oblivious. I'm still oblivious <laughs> to half of it, okay? I'm just hanging on my thread, to be honest. But So basically, um, a publishing deal is basically just getting paid to write your songs, which I was already doing anyway. Um, but once you sign a publishing deal, you have this rich group of really talented writers that you get paired up with. And I've been meeting so many incredible writers and track people and um, just getting into some new rooms and getting some fresh ideas and kind of, you know, pushing the limits of what I usually do. And so it's like when you, when you go in, um, you know, obviously I have say of who I want to write with, but sometimes I'll just, my girl will be like, Hey, do you want to write with this person? I'm like, never met him before, but sure. And it's always a, a new experience. And you end up coming up with something really cool when you come from different backgrounds and stuff and you have these different stories to tell with each other, uh, which obviously I love a good story song. Yeah. For and sure. uh, basically, yeah, sign there. And um, I've never been signed with a publishing deal before, so I really didn't know how anything worked, but <laughs> I'm really enjoying it so far. And um, I, I took my first meeting there and ended up just feeling right at home. So we, uh, we didn't even take any other meetings. We just went straight for Warner Chapel, and uh, I think I made a great choice. I love them over there. Awesome. Oh, and I'm so glad to hear that just because, like I said, I don't really know how any of that works, but it, it's nice to have, you know, it's like you almost have more more resources, more, I don't know, just set at your fingertips oh, almost, you know? Yeah. You know, because, like, you, I mean, I can write my story as much as I want, but hearing somebody else's story and being able to interpret it in your own way and kind of come up with this you know, this song that's part of two people that's just like, I don't know, it's just more, what's the word I'm looking for? It's basically just more information. I don't know how to put yeah. it, but it's just like, you know, hearing other people's lives and kind of intertwining it with yours makes something really special. For sure. You know, what's interesting is that I'm like waiting on a song from you that describes uh, one, of, one of your social media snafus um, that you like have been document in a while on um and I will say like I love seeing all of your get ready with me's and you know showing off your outfits and and all this fun stuff that happens but like recently you posted about this crazy stalker person who thought that they like had a relationship with you I feel like there's a song coming from that like <laughs> and it's crazy the amount of people that are still continuing to get scammed by these fake accounts every Terrible. day. I probably block anywhere from 30 to 50 fake accounts a day across oh my, my social media. Yeah, that's crazy. And they are all those same kinds of people that are trying to get your information, get your money, and they pretend to be me. Mm -hmm. And some people that just aren't tech savvy or older people, you know, yeah. they um, fall for it. And it's unfortunate, but that's another story for another time but yes i think there is definitely a song in there uh for certain uh, i know that's a shame that's such a shame because like i don't know anybody who knows you would know that you'd never take advantage of somebody like that and that's awful that there are people out there who just are out to get others you know that's terrible and it's terrible sad time. but <laughs> what you do I, I can't police them all so unfortunately i wish i could but yeah. I have the blue check mark. Please don't reply to anybody else. That's right. Blue check mark. Um, well, okay. And that kind of brings me uh, on one of the videos you were talking about how somebody met you out on tour. Um, and so I know that you're kicking off and getting ready to do like a lot of tour stuff in, uh, in you know, the coming year. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. And uh, that kind of makes me nervous to talk about, but hopefully it's going to be okay. Event security is going to take care of stuff for you, but uh, we um, have doubled down security as of late. So I always have good. security with me now. So that's, that's good. Good. Take note listeners that are trying to be a stalker. Don't do that. 
Be good with there's Taylor. There's security. Even if you think there's not security, they are watching. <laughs> That's good. That's real good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. Um, like we said, you have the Opry coming up, and then you have like several dates sprinkled in throughout this next like month to do a little press for tour and the album. Um, what else do you have going on? That you can talk about? Man, every year I really look forward to this charity event that we do um, for kids in Appalachia. Um, we raise money to buy them Christmas presents. And so that's always one of my favorite events of the year. It's a charity thing. It's in Richmond, Kentucky this year um, at Chenault Vineyards. And it's going to be me and Halfway to Hazard, some of my best friends. And Ben, yeah. of course, is playing. Um, but I really look forward to that every single year. Um, I'm going back to Fox News to be on with Jimmy Failure cool. um, to talk about the new album. So I'm going up to New York um, at the end of this month. I'm really excited to see him and the whole crew again. And then other than that, I'm just going to focus on some writing. The end of the year in Nashville kind of just comes to a halt because everybody's at home for the holidays, and I don't blame them. And I think it is good to take a little bit of time off. But come January, we are right back at it. So keep your eyes peeled for new tour dates and everything. We're hopefully going to make it um, to some new states this year. I'm very excited about it. Ooh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't wait to see and follow along and see where you are. I know, I know that you'll be at Eddie's attic, um, November the 11th and I won't be there cause it's a Monday. Oh, but <laughs> well, and then you did say that you have, um, like your VIP party for the listening event for the new album. You also have, this will release on November 14th. Um, so tell us about the event that you have that night too. So the 14th, I'm going to be at Manchester Music Hall. That's in my stomping grounds of Kentucky. It's in Lexington. Uh, my girl Tyra Madison is going to be opening for me. We just announced that about a week ago. So fun. I love her to death. She's also yeah. from Eastern Kentucky, so I'm excited to mm -hmm. do a show with her. We've never did one together before. Cool. Uh, and then the next night, yeah. we are doing like a VIP listening experience for some ride or dies. Um, I'm basically keeping the address a secret until... I'm having people screenshot the um, pre-save. So if you, I guess you're watching this right now, you could um, still do this. Screenshot yeah. that you pre-saved the album. And then when you screenshot it, post it to your Instagram story, then tag me. And then I will slide in your DMs and send you the address. The place is not huge, so um, it's going to be very private. Very, It's going to be very VIP because it's, like I said, not a huge space. but. Yeah. Me and the boys are going to be doing some acoustic stuff. Um, there's going to be an open bar, um, photo op, just a chance to learn a little bit more about the album and hang out with me, learn more about me if you don't know me already. So I'm uh, really excited about that. We've never did anything like that before, and um, I'm hoping that a lot of writer dies come out to it. Oh, for sure. Oh, my gosh. That's so exciting. Well, okay. The next day, yeah, yeah, go the ahead. Shed. The, the next shed. day is The Shed in Maryville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing my boy Walker Wilson with me on that one. He's from out there mm -hmm. in the area. So um, that is that the day after the album release. Yeah. Busy, busy, busy. Oh, my gosh. You have all the things. Um, well, I can't wait to follow along and, and see how this all goes for you. The album is dropping on November 15th. So, wow. Things are just going to steamroll right on, right on, right on. Um, let me ask you, yeah. Let me ask you before we hop off the call, is there anybody that you'd like to give a shout out to or anything else that you'd like to talk about that we didn't get a chance to, to bring up today? Well, I always got to shout my mom. I already shouted her once, but, um, and then my husband, Ben is just the most, you know, Ben, he's the most supportive. He plays drums. He's on the road with us. He, does a lot behind the scenes that a lot of people really don't see. So I'm going to shout him out specifically. Oh, Love you, Ben. That's so sweet. Oh, my gosh. Uh, big fan of you. Big fan of everything you have going on. Listeners out there, if you don't know Taylor Austin Die, please change your life up. Get get involved. Get going. 
find her on all the streaming platforms find her on all the social media platforms she is ready to give you just the face melting that you need with all of her music oh my gosh um you. i'm a big fan of you lee and oh. coda country and all the work that you do for country music it does not go unnoticed uh, well thank you ah oh, that really just made my day oh my gosh ah oh, it's a grind you know girl it's a grind i know i know it <laughs> Listeners out there, make sure that you go find Taylor Austin Dye's new album, Sick of Me, that drops on November 15th. Oh my gosh, we can't wait to hear it. Y'all have a great day. Thanks, Taylor. Thank y'all.